Good evening. I'll call to order the Arvada City Council meeting for uh, October 16, 2017. Call upon Councilmember Nancy Ford. Would you join me, please, in a moment of reflection? And now, if you'll join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Kristen Rush, if you'll call roll. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Pfeiffer. Here. Councilmember Allard. Here. Councilmember Ford. Here. Councilmember Jones. Here. Councilmember Marriott. Here. Councilmember McGough. Here. Next, we have the approval of the minutes of the October 2nd, 2017 City Council meeting. Any changes, corrections? Seeing no request, they will stand approved as presented. Uh, we have no petitions, recognitions, or communications tonight. We do have a couple people signed up for. Public comment, I'll call on Julia Morrison first. Ms. Morrison. Hi. Good evening. Um, I'm Julia Morrison, 7825 Barbaran Drive. Um, as will be my custom, I will come up and talk to you about the needs of working class people, renters, and wage earners, as there are very few people who come up here and talk to you about that. It's usually landowners that people um, represent. Um, I have an article. I won't read it. It's very long. It's called What's So Bad About Gentrification Anyway? And it's kind of boiled down essentially that the problem is displacement. Um, the article is specific to Denver neighborhoods. Um, so there's a little bit that doesn't really apply to Arvada, but um, there, there's a lot that does. That um, policies put forth by city councils that call for constant development, development that only supports the needs of people that are able to afford luxury apartments and luxury townhomes. That kind of development causes displacement. It causes things like the eggshell to close because we can't find a cook because nobody that would have a job as a cook at a restaurant can actually afford to live in Arvada based on the policies put forth by this body. Um, um, it's things like we could possibly lose um, the parts of our city that really matter to us. We will lose our identity as a working class town. Um, and, and that would be unfortunate. Um, I was thinking a little bit about last meeting you had a person come up to talk to you about um, kind of uh, emergency drills and stuff and how when you have a strong community, it's, it's better for us. We are safer when we're a strong community. Well, we can't be a strong community if everybody moves every year once their lease is up. We can't know our neighbors when our neighbors change every month because a lease is up and they move away because they can't afford the rent spike. We, we can't have that strong community. Um, also, somebody came up to you to talk about the codes and he talked about what will be your legacy as a city council. And I'm wondering if your legacy will be that that builds luxury apartments forcing a working class town to become something that only caters to high, high paid professionals, or if you're willing to protect our identity, if you're willing to protect the wage earners, if you're willing to protect the renters, or if you're just gonna be a body that represents the needs of landowners and landowners only and developers only. Um, and I'm wondering if that's what you want your legacy to be, because it seems to me the decision you're making, that's the legacy you are creating. So I have this article if you want it, um, and that's it. If you want to leave that with the uh, city clerk. Thank you, Ms. Morrison. Next, uh, Kathleen Flynn. Hello. Good evening. Mr. Mayor, council members. Um, I'm Kathleen Flynn. I live at 8785 West 67th Place, where I've resided for 30 years, and I've spoken in front of this body at least two other times about clean air. So I'm gonna hit it again. Okay. Um, I know there's limited amount of things that a city can do to protect our air quality, but I will tell you without clean air and clean water, nothing else matters. So think about that for a minute. 
What the city can do, and I wish you would do, is have ozone monitors and particulate monitors and inform the citizens through the Arvada.org website or through the Arvada report on what those monitors say and how we as individuals can improve our air quality. Okay, we can, we can turn off our cars when they're not moving. Uh, the state has a program called um, enginesoff.com. We can convert our lawnmowers, our lawn equipment to electric instead of gas, et cetera, et cetera. But tonight, I'm going to just focus on one section, which I've talked to you about before. My favorite subject are the trash haulers, which not only cause a lot of air pollution, <coughs> but also noise pollution. And on July 17th, 2017, I wrote a letter addressed to uh, Mr. Mark Williams, mayor and city council members. And I have followed up by phone on that letter on three separate occasions and I still don't have a reply. So now that I have um, an audience that can't leave, I will read you the letter. I'm sure the city remembers the 2010 trash hauler meeting at St. Joan of Arc Church. An agitator from Fort Collins whipped the audience into a frenzy about the possibility of changing to a hauler that was not their first choice. The speaker claimed that cutting out some trash haulers would cost local jobs, but most of the haulers are not local. They're BFI, they're waste management, they're American, they're based in Golden, they're based in Thornton, they're based in Commerce City, and their, their corporate um, offices are out of state. I doubt each employs more than two or three Arvadans. But the city of Arvada made it clear they don't want to be in the trash business, and that's not what I'm asking. I assume that is still your position, but the city could take an oversight. As I suggested to the city council when I spoke in 2010 and 2012, I'll repeat the ideas here. Divide the city into quadrants. Request bids from companies per quadrant. The criteria for the trash hauler sh should be based on A, pollution emitted by the trucks, said pollution must be measured, and the council must have data. B, reliability and customer satisfaction. C, truck weight to minimize street damage. D, the haulers plans to convert trucks to non-fossil fuel in the near future. They get extra points. And lastly, price. In that way, we would have four haulers in the entire city of Arvada. And I suggest that the city contract with each hauler for maybe two or three years so that you can gauge performance and then reopen bids to give other haulers an opportunity. Consider that many people have recyclers picking up two and those companies and their trucks must meet the criteria described. I don't think that's a big burden on the city and I think it would help us a lot. I would love to have one trash truck one day a week going by my house instead of seven or eight every day, five days a week. So. Um, I'll speak to you again about more clean air issues in future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Flynn. Anyone else wish to address council at this time? See, then I'll move on to new business. We have uh, several items on the consent agenda. The first is a resolution authorizing a construction contract between Arvada and Concrete Express for Leiden Road Street improvements, Quaker Street to Orion Way, in an amount of approximately $997,000. The second one's a resolution adopting the amended administrative fee schedule for building safety division permits and services pursuant to chapter 18 of our buildings and building regulations of the Arvada City Code. Third item is a resolution authorizing the submission by the City of Arvada of a 2017 Great Outdoor Colorado planning grant for improvements to Gold Strike Park in the Clear Creek Quarter. Fourth item on the consent agenda is a resolution authorizing an agreement between Arvada and Watertronics Inc. for the manufacture and installation of a new pumping station at Westwoods Golf Club in an amount not to exceed approximately $163,000. Next item on, and that's the last of the consent agenda. Mr. Marriott. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that consent items number R17-111 through R17-114 be approved. Sorry. Try again. Okay, all votes cast. 
That passes seven to zero, thank you. Next we have ordinances on first reading. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move that Council Bill 17-035, an ordinance annexing certain land into the city of Arvada, uh, Beg Industrial, uh, 4927 Allison Street. Also, Council Bill 17-036, an ordinance rezoning certain land within the city of Ar Arvada, Beg Industrial from uh, Jefferson County C1 Commercial to city of Arvada, I-1 Light Industrial and amending the official zoning maps of the City of Arvada, Colorado, 4927 Allison Street. And last, also, uh, Council Bill 17-037, an ordinance adopting the design guidelines for the Reno Park Addition uh, Historic District to be approved on first reading, order published in full, and public hearing uh, set for November 20th, 2017, 2017 at 6.30 p.m. Motions for approval of the, cons of the um, first um, ordinances on first reading, all votes are cast. That passes seven to zero, thank you. Well, because we didn't have any proclamations tonight and not necessarily as many people speak, we're a little bit ahead of schedule. We can't start our uh, public hearings until, t until 6.30, so I will open it up for council reports. Mr. Marriott, you're first. Thank you, Your Honor. I have uh, just one. Um, last week I attended the uh, Colorado Municipal League uh, Policy Committee uh, initial meeting of the year. Uh, the, the policy committee is comprised of about 50 or 60 people from uh, all the municipalities represented by uh, CML, the towns and cities. Um, and uh, there was about uh, a 10 or so items that uh, the policy committee weighed in on making recommendations to the board. Uh, about whether to support or not support or take a neutral position on different legislative matters. Um, the ones of not much interest to the city of Arvada were some oil and gas regulations. Um, however, the policy committee weighed in on those as well. So uh, that first meeting has happened. There will be a second meeting of the policy committee in December as legislation becomes more clear and I will be attending that as well and uh, uh, representing the city on in that function. Very good. Mr. Piver? Yeah, I'd like to share with Council and the public. Um, last week I was asked to represent the Colorado C Communications Utility Alliance organization, which we're a member of at the FCC, based on my relationships with the FCC commissioners. Uh, last week I met with um, uh, two of the commissioners and, and several of their staff in regards to small cell site deployments. I won't bore you with the technical aspects of it, but I will say that having a local municipal, I was there with a mayor out of Washington State um, representing local control matters. Um, sometimes there's some overreaching um, uh, items getting in front of the FCC, and in this case, they were looking at doing a, black, a blanket approval with shot clocks. In other words, if somebody came in and just wanted to put a small cell somewhere and we didn't approve it within an X amount of time that hasn't been determined yet that the federal government will deem it as approved. And um, so I was asked to represent some cities uh, to uh, persuade the commission not to be the federal land zoning authority <laughs> and to uh, respect uh, our local control in those matters. So, and, and also they were talking about pre-application uh, meetings where if we met with uh, applicants before an application is uh, submitted, that would go against us in our timing. Um, so that it would hurt us even more in there and we probably wouldn't have that collaborative discussion. So I also advocated on what we do right and that the people that are doing it right shouldn't be penalized uh, for those few that are doing something wrong. And, and basically this is the whole push to get cell phone coverage with broadband and internet. I mean, it's the big push. I will provide council a uh, written report in Friday's memo. I asked Mr. Devin if I can put it in his memo, as well as all of the, is it the ex parte? Uh, look at the lawyer here to make sure I'm using the right words. Um, but I have to, we have to submit one of those to the FCC every time we meet with them. And so I have a copy of that. We'll show what Denver was with me and what they've done for their council and what they've done to educate their public on the subject, as well as uh, what we talked about uh, with the commissioners for two days. So okay. that'll be in Friday's memo. Very good. I see Chief Wick in the audience. Chief Wick was busy um, last week interviewing for the new CBI director, so he sent one of his deputy chiefs instead, along with myself, to Pomona High School for their uh, homecoming uh, uh, 
and we got to, along with um, Brad Rupert and a, uh, the principal from Moore, um, and we um, got to judge the doors that they had all designed. But the thing you really missed, Chief Wick, was the assembly with all four grades in the, in the auditorium, in the gym, to see who could yell the loudest. And the ringing has almost left my ears. But uh, Chief Wick, I'm, I, I knew it was important that you be down uh, interviewing for the new CBI head, but uh, you missed a really good time. So that was, uh, that was a nice thing. Mr. Jones? I wish I was there. <laughs> uh, just a couple of quick updates. Um, uh, Ms. Ford and I sit on the uh, Arvada Fire Protection District Coordinating Committee and we had a meeting with them last week and they announced that their schedule has been accelerated for their station nine. It's the it's the Candela, uh, the, the Candela station. I remember the number. Uh, so they will be uh, their design and build in 18 and occupy in 19, as opposed to occupy, in in 20, correct? So I think that's a great thing for uh, for the folks that live uh, in that in that section of town. Um, also, uh, just a little plug for anyone who's interested in. Uh, putting their name in the hat for a committee for the Jefferson Parkway Public Highway Authority. I believe they're still accepting applications. I know, I don't see Bill. Yes. So I think until like next, next week, I can't remember the exact Well, date. actually it might be like tomorrow yeah. or Wednesday. Um, right. But anyway, uh, go to jpp.org, I believe is the website to uh, get information on that. And then lastly, I just want to give a, um, a uh, shout out to our police force. I had the opportunity on Saturday night to ride with actually Sergeant Dixon, uh, who's in the back here. And I, I just can't tell you how impressed I am by our men and women of the Arvada Police Department. Uh, they do an amazing job. Uh, they're uh, truly looking out for us and our safety. And so I just want to thank um, Police Chief Wick and also thank uh, Sergeant Dixon for the the time, the 12 hours that you let me ride uh, next to you in your car. It was awesome. We had a great time. I did not get to drive and I did not get to talk on the, on the walkie talkie. <laughs> so, anyway, I just, I couldn't be uh, more proud of our, of our men and women in blue and I appreciate the work that they do uh, on our behalf. Very good. Mr. Devin, do you have any reports for us that you want to do here? Uh, well, yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we will not have another workshop until November the 27th uh, when we will discuss the Arvada Center Master Plan, uh, do, uh, provide you with information about workshops, uh, and also discuss traffic safety uh, on, on the 27th. Uh, also, uh, would like to uh, mention a couple of things. Um, uh, in, uh, I had uh, given you all some information last week about the Adams County Mayor and Commissioner's Youth Award and some changes that we wanted to make where we, uh, we, we just have such a small population of youth in Adams County that um, it's, it, it, in, in some respects, it's sort of skewing the process, uh, the awards process. What we're recommending to do is continue to provide some financial support for that, but no longer necessarily nominate uh, a youth unless it comes through another school, uh, another community. Are, are you all okay with that? Um, and then um, a reminder that uh, we have the uh, Arvada Marketplace grand opening on Saturday at 11 o'clock. Uh, right now we have the, the mayor and council member Allard uh, scheduled to, to go. Um, so uh, if any of you, if, and, and you'd like to go too, Mark? Uh, okay, so we'll, we'll, uh, we'll um, put you down. Anyone else? And John? Okay. Uh, so we'll add, add those, uh, Mark and John, on. Uh, and uh, the, the only uh, other thing to mention is on December the 11th, moving back to the workshop schedule, we'll have um, annual updates on the implementation of our comprehensive um, plan and also demographic indicators. Um, uh, we'll have some additional information. I know a number of you went to the Denver Water Tour uh, and we'll have some additional presentation on the plan improvements around Ralston Reservoir. And then also on the 11th, fiber master plan update uh, will occur as well. So that's, uh, that's the upcoming schedule through the end of the year. Very good, Mr. Pfeiffer. 
Yeah, Mr. Mayor, uh, traditionally we do not meet the Monday before uh, election day. Do you see it's mm -hmm. time uh, fit for us to go ahead and officially cancel that meeting since it's our business meeting? We don't have it scheduled. It's already, canceled. it's already been canceled. Did we officially cancel it or do we just not put it on? It certainly wouldn't hurt to make a motion. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then Mr. I'll go ahead and make the motion to cancel the November 6th uh, City Council business meeting. All votes are cast. That passes the seven to zero, thank you. Mr. McGough? Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to add a little bit more to what Mr. Devon said about the Adams County uh, Youth Awards, the Mayor's Youth Award, Mayor's and Commissioner's Youth Awards, whatever that official title is. Uh, I think it, it's the case that since we do not, ha we have a portion of Arvada that is in Adams County, but we do not have schools in the Adams County portion of Arvada. Yet, if one of our students who resides in that portion is nominated for an award with Adams County, we will certainly recognize that, uh, that student here at the City Council, and we will, we will continue to support the awards program in Adams County with our um, uh, contribution to that effort uh, in the amount of uh, $750 each year. So. Uh, we will still be recognizing any Adams County youth who are honored by Adams County. Who reside in Arvada. Yep. And who reside in the Adams, portion, Adams County portion of right. Arvada. Okay. Very good. Nancy Ford. Well, as you folks know, but not everyone in the audience, I'm a member of the board on the Arvada Center. And uh, this Saturday, the 21st, they're having a special production of... Uh, children's theater production, A Year with Frog and Toad, followed by Cookies with the cast. Um, they're encouraging Halloween costumes, and it's a time that people can experience the new digital creative arts lab where kids can take photos with Frog and Toad and make uh, cards and uh, digital takeaways. Uh, the performance is at 3 p.m., and uh, that digital creative arts lab will be open from 12 to 3, and then four, at 4 p.m., cookies with the cast. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, now we're at the uh, 6.30 mark, so I'm going to open the public hearing uh, on the Nance Properties Preliminary Development Plan. Mr. Devin? Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, uh, Planning Manager Rob uh, Smentana will make this uh, presentation. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, the, applicant, uh, the applicants are requesting approval of a prelim uh, preliminary development plan to construct a 5,000 square foot office building and another 4,800 square foot warehouse at 6783 Fig Street. The applicants intend to use the buildings for their business, front range excavation. The property is approximately 1.9 acres in size and is zoned PUDI and has a future land use designation of industrial office and retail. The facility will be used for administrative staff and to store and maintain contractors, vehicles, and equipment. The applicant is requesting to modify the landscape buffers along the western and northern uh, sides of the property by reducing the width in some areas and reducing the amount of required vegetation. More information is available in the staff report. After reviewing the application, staff concluded that the proposal was in conformance with the comprehensive plan and the PUDI development standards and recommended approval. The project was also recommended by, uh, for approval by the Planning Commission on a vote of six to zero with one abstention. The applicant has submitted the required mailing notice and sign posting affidavit and they are in order. Uh, planner Will Tucker and traffic engineer Sylvia Lopo are here to answer any questions as well as the applicant being present. Okay, the posting log and the mailing affidavit will be made part of the record. Anyone who wishes to testify on this matter, if they'll raise their right hand. Do you swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give in this proceeding will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Very good. If the applicant wishes to make a presentation. Good evening. Uh, my name is Ralph Nance. I've had uh, front range excavating in Arvada since 1988. And 
We have had our offices over on 52nd and Marshall now for quite a while. We're in a place where we want to try to consolidate both our shop and our office staff in the same facility. So this property on 67th and Fig fits to what we are looking to do. And um, so this is a presentation for that, I believe. No. There we go. Oh. There you go. So it is a, a 1.9 acre piece of land that's vacant over the, the uh, light industrial area off of 64th roughly in uh, Fig Street near Indiana. Uh, like, like was said before, we have our office building which is up in front, it's about 5,000 square feet. And then the, our uh, maintenance facility is in, in behind it. That's 4,800 square feet. <clears throat> We use it for our offices and then we do light work on our equipment uh, when, it's, when it has to come in and get worked on. And then we park uh, anywhere from five to seven vehicles in the parking lot overnight. That's how many we have. Um, and then we have less than 5% of the property be screened for outside storage and the fact that we don't use a lot of outside storage. So we don't have a lot of excess anything other than our equipment. We do not have uh, like forms or wood or things like that that we store we don't have that stuff so other than one of our some of our machines actually being in the yard itself uh, that's what we keep there and fortunately because of the economy most of all that equipment is on site somewhere in, in the denver area so we very seldom have equipment around we might have one or two pieces in there through a, a period of a week and like i say our trucks park in there overnight and uh from the standpoint of those, they are guys that leave about seven o'clock in the morning and they return about three o'clock in the afternoon. We work typically Monday through Friday and very seldom on Saturdays if, if uh, we are allowed to, if we have to work, we do, but it's not very often and usually those are half days. Um, we don't have ongoing traffic coming and going from our facility other than our staff that may come and go. The big trucks, they leave in the morning, come back in the afternoon. So they're not in a situation where they come and go during the day. This um, map shows you about where the site is. It's that red outlined area right there. It's the 1.9 acres. It borders the rest of the industrial park on the south. And then the rest of the industrial park is to the east across Fig Street. To the north and west of us is 20 acres that's currently residential and is zoned to be well, future I-1 property uh, with City Arvada should they choose to come into Arvada because they're in, they're in Jefferson County right now. So they, um, that's the reason for the, the buffer deal is because that property um, in reality will probably never be anything but industrial if it's ever sold. That's been attempted a few times already, but it hasn't occurred yet. Um, I think mostly because of traffic problems off Indiana, but for right now, for a long time, it's going to be uh, what it is, what you see right there, right now. This is a map of the facility area. Uh, we have parking in front, it's landscape. We actually have provided for about uh, 5,000 more feet of landscaping than is required by, by the, the rules. Uh, we have a, the whole green area is full of trees. So there's like 20 some trees that are all in that uh, green ponding area to the north of the building and in the east to uh, protect the building from, you know, from people seeing it very well. There's actually a wall that goes down the north side of the building, it ties over to the office. That's a screening wall for that's where we would store anything that we might have uh, between the building and that wall in that area you see to the north of the build of the maintenance facility. So you have the screen wall, plus you have all the trees to uh, protect the view from anybody that would be to the north where the path is. East elevation of the building, the front and the sides of the building will feature um, this combination of ground face and split face CMU and uh, the white aluminum storefront have gray tinted glass on it. So we actually have that on the front of the building and then also down both sides to the complete end of the sides, even though it's not required, 
to be all the way to the end on the north and south side. We went ahead and took it all the way to the end of the building, so it's, it's that CMU all the way on all three sides. <clears throat> It'll be metal in back, which is not visible from anywhere in the street. This is the west elevation, uh, the secondary structure, which is our shop, um, which is behind it. And it'll have the reverse panel ribbing for the, the sheeting on the building. I think that's it. Okay, anything further? Okay. No. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I've got one person who's signed up to speak, Mr. Earl. Is it um, Cat? Cot? Good evening, Council. Good evening. I live at 6834 Nelson, not, that's the old address, 13856 West 68th. So I'm a little bit east of the project, just the other side of McIntyre. Lived there for 26 years. So I know the coming and going in the neighborhood. I'd welcome them to the neighborhood. I think it's a great place for them to build. Looks nice. I think it'll work good. The only concerns I have is the truck traffic. I've already got RTD buses and everybody in the neighborhood going in front of my house and going up to the other two developments to the north. If he keeps his trucks on FIG and they go down and go up Eldridge and over to 72nd, great. They go out the other way to the south and over to 64th, it'll work out great. But if he goes down 68th all the way and wraps around over by the um, Apex Center, there's a lot of houses that face that street and they don't need the additional tra tra truck traffic. Noise doesn't bother me. I, I take care of eight buildings on 35 acres in Aurora. I know what they do. They're not gonna be make, causing a lot of noise. They just go out and they come back and store their vehicles and keep them in the back and do their maintenance on them. So I think it's a good idea all the way around. Just don't send the truck traffic down that way. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? The applicant would address the issue of which way your truck traffic is going to go in response to the testimony. Yeah, we were, cons you know, we were obviously aware of that. I actually lived for 20 years at Wildflower Ponds across the street on 64th and Gardenia. So I'm well aware. I watched the shopping center get built and the whole thing. So I understand all the traffic concerns of the area. So that's why our trucks will always go down Fig Street, exit onto 64th. They go actually, they go down Fig and it curves and becomes Gardenia mm -hmm. and it goes over to uh, the 64th. So they will always go that way. We will never go through the neighborhoods. So our trucks will never go north um, and end up on Eldridge, that area down there to the north that I showed you on the drawing. So yeah, we will always be going that way, okay. which follows in line with all the other businesses that are already there ahead of us. I'm sure that's the way most of them go. But yeah, that's the way we'll go. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, I'll close the uh, public testimony portion, open up for City Council questions. Mr. Jones, you're first. <clears throat> I just have uh, one question and then I'll reserve motion. Motion. Um, with regard to um, the street uh, FIG, I saw in the notes that um, you'll be responsible for funding the future development of, or I guess expansion of FIG, and I don't know exactly how to say that. Um, I do. Okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's a sore topic. Um, it's set up in the future for Eldridge, which right now, if you go over there, Eldridge is not complete. Right. You can come off of 64th by the self storage and it comes down a bit and then it's, there's nothing. It's, it's just weeds. So it never got completed when the development was built years ago. And then 67th Avenue is a street that goes just south of our property back as a cul-de-sac to the west off of Fig. So uh, the fees that we're paying for those two streets being built are what they're for. And those streets, you know, according to, you know, Mark talked to Mark a number of times, you know, they're not slated to be built until all those properties are sold. And uh, that's not going to happen for a while. You know, we're all going to be gone. 
probably when that happens. I hope not. And so it's not set up for the streets to get built until all the money's collected on all, from all those properties that are over there. And there's probably about a dozen, something like that, that have to be sold before that'll ever happen. So our fees will get paid to the city, but they're not going anywhere. Well, thank you for agreeing to do that because I think, you know, as does as that, that answer that? Yes, no, that does. I just okay. wanted to be clear that, that that those fees that you were paying were for the the completion of those couple that, of roads. Yeah, that's what they're for. Um, so thank you for yeah. for agreeing to do that as part of uh, of this conversation. Um, as far as along Fig, I know that there's curb there. Is there a requirement for sidewalk for detached sidewalk as a part of this? I didn't. I'm not seeing. It's already sidewalk. On, um, on both sides or just on, on the east side? On his side, I'm, I'm not sure about the uh, west, or I'm sorry, the, the eastern side, but staff agreed that uh, the, staff agreed that the existing sidewalk was sufficient, and um, Mr. Manwaring just informed me that they're on both sides. Okay. Okay. Those are the only questions I have. Thank Very you. Very good. Mr. McGough, you are next. Yes, thank you. My, my question um, relates to that area, um, the issue that uh, Mr. Jones brought up, the, uh, the staff report as well as other documents are very specific in talking about uh, the applicant is required to pay a contribution toward the construction of raid, road improvements for West 67th and Eldridge. Uh, uh, so I'm just wondering what, uh, what improvements will be made specifically since um, at least my maps don't even show 67th intersecting 67th Avenue intersecting with Eldridge, I'm just wondering what it is that will happen at 67th and Eldridge. On page one of the staff report um, that shows the vicinity map, um, you can see a rough outline of the subdivision plat. Um, slightly below the subject property, property slightly south, um, you'll see an unimproved platted uh, cul-de-sac, um, a right-of-way there. You're referring to page one of the yeah. staff report? There's uh, my apologies, page two. Page two, um, okay. And you can see on there where it calls out the, the subject property, and uh, slightly south of that, you'll see the unimproved right-of-way. It's already platted. Um, but it is called out to be um, a future road for those um, parcels that are served by it, and that's what the funds will be going to. Okay, so the, the red lines on that map, are they indicate the individual parcels that are there currently? That, that's and, correct. And where the street will go, and so the improvements will be to where 67th will intersect with Eldridge. That's what we're... 67th will intersect with Fig, um, and then there is one parcel that separates Fig and Eldridge. Um, Eldridge is unimproved um, slightly to the east um, that runs behind uh, what is now Easter Owens um, and abuts the residential neighborhood to the east. Okay, so the, the contribution will be held by the city until such time as the improved, until there's enough development there to warrant the improvements to be made. And it, it will be held until all the uh, parcels have paid into it or otherwise or, uh, all the parcels have, um, app have applications in with the city. Um, and when that date is, we're not sure. Um, but until we receive all of the funds, I believe it's in within the development agreement that we have 10 years to, to use those funds towards the improvements. Okay. Thank you. Mr. I'm McGough, Mr. McGough, I might also add that as, as 67th is improved, the long range plan is extended out to Indiana. So when that property to the west of this develops, we'd be looking to extend that to Indiana and make that connection. Oh, okay. That's so it will extend from Eldridge to Fig, then over to Indiana. From Fig to Indiana. And if you look at that uh, aerial photo with the red lines on, you can kind of see a cul-de-sac bulb in the right of way there. It, yes. It takes it right up to the west edge of that property. At some point, we connect another road to that and take it out to Indiana. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. That clarifies it for me. Great. Mr. Pfeiffer? Yeah, I didn't hear much. You asked for a modification to landscaping requirements for the industrial use. Could you kind of go into what you're asking there a little bit more? And I've read it, but I want to make sure I understand it. Okay. Part of it is just the, not to take all the land away from where we, the back of the property where we can turn our trucks around, that kind of thing. 
And so we, do, we just asked for it to be reduced back some feet so we don't have to plant a whole bunch of trees back there in an area that's gonna actually be buffered, buff, a butt to uh, industrial property in the future, just like we are to the south. So on the west side. You're the west side, the west side, yeah. yeah. And so that north side, we cover the building up pretty much with trees. You see that landscape area, I mean, that thing's a forest. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, you're not gonna see it. There's like, like I said, there's like 20 some trees in that, that area back there. And then we have a wall as well. So that'll be on the north side of the office building and the west of the office building. North of the building is the, is the landscape area you yeah, see. Yeah, the, the green area. From that area west, it's that area from there west that we're talking about, that short distance from the landscape area, big area to the yeah. west along the fence line. The other page. And then the west side of the property. And those areas, and like I say, they much. are right next to the that a vacant land that's Jefferson County, but it will be if it, and if it ever gets built on, it'll be built in Arvada as industrial. Okay. So we just wanted the same kind of buffer we would have like we have on the south side of the property for all those areas that are also industrial. Okay. And then with the with the back area, are you using some sort of I'm assuming crushed I'm sorry. on the on the West side of your property, the asphalt yeah, those are all crusher fines. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. So, back there, you no, not crusher fines. It's asphalt stuff. It's okay. uh, recycled asphalt. Asphalt pour down, yeah. so it doesn't kick up dust or anything like that. Yeah, and that's stuff that we did working with the fire department. Yeah. So they'd be able to turn their vehicles in there, but like I, I told them, I I have bigger trucks than they do. <laughs> yeah, you do. So we're gonna make sure that they can turn around. So will you be storing any of those trucks back there? It's in a an unfortunate change in the economy. Is this also your storage yard for those? Yeah, for those five. Those, they're anywhere from five to seven that might be yeah, in there. But it's those big ones, right? Those. Yeah, well, we have three that are the semi size, and we have two that are tandem, the shorter trucks. Right, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's yep. all the questions I have. Thank okay. you. Okay, Mr. Jones, oh. you may make a motion. Okay, one more question. Sorry. The, the native grass you were referring to? I'm assuming you'll maintain that to city code and so forth, not just let it go. Like what, really, what is that? the native grass. There was something about just putting down native grass on. Well, we have sod more like in the front, and then okay. there's native grasses they oh, have around on, the edge, around the, the tree areas. But yeah, all that'll be mowed. That's not going to oh, be. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not going to be a wild. It's not going to be like it is down by the by the <laughs> path. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry. Mr. Jones. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that Nance Properties Preliminary Development Plan located at 6783 Fig Street be approved subject to the attached updated conditions of approval. And this motion is based on the findings of fact adopted by the Planning Commission. Motions for approval. I'm going to be supporting the motion. For those of us who have been around a long time, um, there was a huge push to try to go resident from the owners of these properties to try to go residential. And we really wanted to preserve for these types of uses because we don't have much light industrial land left. So uh, it's great to see something finally moving forward. Hopefully this project can be the, um, the start of, of development there for similar types of, of appropriate uses. Uh, we've, you know, I'm glad we didn't just sell out to, to residential development on this site. So uh, I'll be supporting the motion. All votes are cast. And passes seven to zero. Thank you. Congratulations. Good Thank luck you. with your project. Okay, next I'll open the public hearing on Council or CP 2017-001, a resolution by the Planning Commission for the City of Arvada, Colorado to amend the City of Arvada Comprehensive Plan 2014 to incorporate the 2017 Arvada Bicycle Master Plan and make additional revisions related thereto. Mr. Devin? Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. The proposed action is ratification and approval of the Comprehensive Plan Amendment. So the Planning Commission did approve this and we're asking the City Council to ratify this action. Uh, what is being requested is the re approval of a comprehensive man comprehensive plan amendment in order to inc incorporate the 2017 Arvada Bicycle Master Plan uh, into the into the comprehensive plan. This plan was put together with a great deal of public input and also with the very good effort by the Arvada Bicycle Advisory Committee. Uh, we have uh, John Fruzzi here. If you have any specific questions about the Bicycle Master Plan, uh, staff is certainly recommending that you ratify as requested. 
Okay, is there any member of the public that would like to address City Council on the Arvada Bicycle Master Plan? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion, open it up to City Council questions or action. Ms. Ford. I have a number of questions I'd like to ask. Um, this would be for Bob. Um, Bob, can you tell me in terms of uh, lane miles, <clears throat> excuse me, how does traffic, in terms of cost, traffic lane miles versus bike lane miles, can you tell me a little bit about cost on that? Are you talking about maintenance or construction? Construction. Um, well, we consider about $100 to $150 per lane mile to construct a road. So if you were to consider a bike lane as about a four foot out of a 12 foot lane, $25 to $50 a foot. Okay. And um, John, this would be for you. What would be uh, under 2.04, what would be in a bicycle education kit? For um, bicycle education, typically the um, uh, bike rodeo system is, is the best way to essentially get students and, and uh, even parents uh, familiarized with rules of the roads, uh, traffic signs and markings, as well as gain um, uh, knowledge of how to look over uh, the shoulder when changing lanes and what to do when approaching a, um, a railroad crossing and that kind of thing. So typically this is uh, uh, both um, something that is active and physical uh, for, for the folks involved and then also um, uh, there are informational type of pamphlets and other kinds of flyers that's also produced and provided by Bicycle Colorado or advocacy groups um, uh, that are in that business. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just look at something here because my notes don't make sense here. In reference to 2.08, Oh, um, <clears throat> that one was in terms of committee's recommendation, I guess. Um, how will we determine that at what point? Will that be either under the um, transportation advisory committee or separate? It says, while moving towards an ad advisory role with city council to, let's see. Oh, talking about the Arvada Bicycle Advisory Committee. Would that, would we maintain that committee or is that gonna go into transportation? <clears throat> um, we'd wanna maintain that committee. Yes. Okay. In uh, 2.11, it talks about Car Street as a central bikeway. Tell me a little bit more what a central bikeway is. In terms of um, connectivity and um, in terms of the lane miles of, of the facility, both the uh, pathway provides connectivity over multiple neighborhoods and across multiple uh, trails and arterials and collectors. And then also um, the bike facility on Car Street is the most continuous in terms of bike lanes in the city. So therefore, um, it, it received that designation. Okay. Mrs. Ford, I might add, if you go out on Car Street today, you'll see signs along Car, identifying it as uh, that particular trail and it travels from jurisdiction to jurisdiction along that, more or less along that alignment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and that's where Mr. Marriott's children are going to set up a, a lemonade stand. <laughs> Especially at the bottom of that hill. That would be a good place. Um, on 2.16, uh, 
it said uh, the city would give away helmets and bicycle lights. Do we have a budget for that or we have any idea of what we're thinking about in terms of giving away, how many helmets we'd be giving away? I think of them as being rather expensive myself. <laughs> but. Um, so typically in the past we have uh, applied for grant programs that provide a small budget for us to do these kinds of activities. We, we do have a little, um, uh, a little extra left over from um, a previous grant that we have then stocked up on on some of these items. Uh, so yes, every every uh, couple of years we look for opportunities to uh, uh, purchase such safety gear and uh, incentives uh, to provide to Bicycle Friendly Arvada or Bike Colorado or advocacy groups that are active with with the public. Okay. And then under 2.17, it talked about paid staff to teach bicycle maintenance. Who would that be on staff? Uh, currently, that's a volunteer effort, so there's, there's no one designated uh, to provide that service at the moment. Okay. Under... Um, I think Mr. Fiverr's got something here well, on I, that specific yeah, point. Yeah, I was going to say, there, Mr. McGough, who was the gentleman we met? I thought he had an earn a bike program uh, there on 64th and Wadsworth. Remember we, you and I met with him? Uh, I think the staff might have met him. Bob... Bob Matter, I yeah, think. Bob yeah, Matters. Bob Matter. Yes. But doesn't he have some sort of... I know he... Yeah, he has a bi bicycle education program as well as a program to award bicycles, to present bicycles to deserving young people. All right, if I remember right. But, I, but I don't remember the specifics of that, but well, he's we very can, much involved. Yeah, so we could probably link the programs to yes. something to this where... I'm in touch with Bob. Okay, yes. perfect. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Okay, Nancy? Oh, I just wanted to make a comment that there, there was a missing word under 2.9 uh, could have been effective in improving safety. Anyway, 2.20... Um, Question for Maria, did we include a question in this year's survey on the bike bicycling? Under 2.20, there's a, to amend the Arvada Citizen Survey, was just curious if we did anything this year? I'll have to look. Um, if you can give me a second, I can look at it now. Um, off the top of my head, I'm thinking we did not, um, but let me take a look and I'll get back to you. Okay. And then under 2.21 and 2.22, um, it talks about tracking programs and um, count initiatives. Who would be involved in doing that particular uh, role? Typically, that would, that would be tracking, uh, traffic engineering, that would be tracking um, uh, the users, number of users on uh, bike lanes and also trails. Uh, from time to time, we've borrowed equipment from CDOT to uh, provide that service and, and uh, have conducted counts or through other uh, developer projects and, and um, different studies. Okay. Um, and I think that also had to do with 2.26. I believe that was um, involving the police department. Um, I do have a question for our chief of police. Um, what amount of time do you think would be feasible for the police department to spend on um, enforcement with the bicycling community? I haven't seen the master plan, uh, so I, I'm not sure that I would be informed enough at this moment to answer the question, but I will look at it and give you a response. Okay, thanks. And Council Member Ford, um, as far as the citizen survey, uh, what this is referring to is, um, obviously it says include more bicycle specific questions. In years past when we had the uh, the 12 page survey that was quite lengthy. Um, we did include a section with some specific questions about um, bicycle, 
bicycling in Arvada. Um, I think that a lot of this work was done before we made the decision to go in a different direction. And, and as, you, as you are well aware, we shortened the survey dramatically. So um, I can't find a copy of the survey right now. But um, if we included a question, there would have been no more than one. Um, okay. Really, with a, strategically to keep it much, much shorter than it's been in years past. And frankly, um, a lot of the information that we received in the past was not written in a way that was really useful for us. But obviously, we can look at it again um, as we move forward, as, as we have completely retooled the way that we're doing the citizen survey. OK. And I have one more question. And um, that has to do with 2.34. And the uh, snow maintenance. And um, I guess when I was reading that, my one concern was is that we, I, would, I wanted to make sure that we would not be taking resources from the street. Um, not to say that it's not important to shovel for bike riders, but I would imagine that there aren't a whole lot of bike riders during the snow. I know there will be few, but um, I was curious as to, uh, you know, had we thought about uh, resources spent on clearing snow for bicycling in particular? Uh, let me just say a couple things, Mrs. Ford. First of all, these are recommendations that we are kind of the nascent stage. We haven't really followed up and assigned priorities or those kinds of things to these. I mean, there's 34 recommendations here, clearly. In terms of the snow removal, um, the crews will go out and clear uh, the lanes, the driving lanes, uh, as best as possible with the initial swipe or the initial pass or two through the city. Once all the priority one routes and priority two routes are complete, then they'll come back and start doing some cleanup work. So if there are on-street bike lanes, those will come in afterwards. Once all the travel lanes are cleared out, then they'll come back in with trucks and sometimes graders or um, dumps to remove the snow, but that's further down on the priority list, certainly. Okay. Okay. But, but, but could I respond? I mean, doesn't parks clear out the, you know, yeah. out of fairness, there yeah. is trails that are cleared. Yeah, yeah thank you, Bob. Really Carter. quickly. Yeah, actually. they go out with uh, and do the trails, the off-street trails, that's yeah, correct. Because you got mm -hmm. some, yeah, I see them out all the time, yeah. Mr. Pfeiffer, you can go with your questions or comments. Do you have anything else? No. Okay. Mr. Jones. Sorry, Mr. Pfeiffer. So I just have one question, <clears throat> Mr. Fruzzi, and I'm sure that Mr. Devin's gonna know exactly which one I'm gonna ask about, safe routes to school. Um, so will this plan, will this help us in our conversation uh, with safe routes to school as we build more and more opportunities to complete sidewalk, sidewalk gaps and so on and so forth? Or I guess so Mr. Devon or Mr. Peruzzi can answer that question. Perhaps. Uh, how John wants to answer, okay. so I'll let him answer. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Council Member Jones, the answer is yes and no. Um, it's, it's yes in that um, uh, the bicycle master plan lays out the, the corridors where improvements need to take place, and a lot of them are based on the low stress network of, of uh, bike facilities that serve the um, uh, children plus the interested in con but concerned um, uh, population in, in the city. Now, um, Safe Routes to School is its, its own standalone program, and it focuses on uh, a variety of things, such as crosswalks, for example, that, that are not part of necessarily the bicycle master plan. So whenever there is overlap, we will be looking at this document as well as all of the other kind of work that we do to see how this document can help influence the design. And um, we could reference it in the Safe Routes to School application. But on, on its own, it doesn't really um, uh, inform the Safe Routes to School program. No, and I, you answered that's exactly what I wanted to hear, was that it, <clears throat> on, standing on its own, it's not going to help us at all. But it will certainly not be a bad thing to include in any application when we're, we're hoping to get some money from CDOT. Thank you. OK, Mr. Marriott. Thank you. <clears throat> we all seem to have our favorite part of the Bicycle Master Plan. I think Mr. Devin knows what my favorite part is. Um, within the Bicycle Master Plan, and by the way, I really like this Bicycle Master Plan. I think uh, the, uh, the 
Bicycle Advisory Committee has done a terrific job as well as the Transportation Committee in weighing in on this and the staff has done an amazing job. I've read this thing from start to finish and uh, have seen other bicycle master plans as well and this one I think is very comprehensive, really well done and <clears throat> I believe will really be a good tool for as Arvada moves forward in the future in improving our bicycle infrastructure. But my favorite part of it is the policy recommendations and one of the policy recommendations in there is to review electric bicycle use on bikeways and trails and <clears throat> my only question would be what do you think is the time frame for being able to do that? It seems like that's a policy question that could be embarked on at kind of any time. You know, we're not waiting for something else to get built first or completion of this or completion of that before that step can be taken. And uh, is that something that, that can be looked at sooner rather than later? Yes, absolutely. Um, it's, it's a no cost uh, type of pol policy or recommendation that part of, as part of this um, bike master plan. So uh, definitely I think it's a, it's a great priority item to have. And um, the transmission committee has been pretty active uh, on discussions about it. So um, I think once we, now that we have this document and once we have kind of a chance to uh, do some of the um, uh, pick at pick at the easier policy related uh, items. We will certainly look at implementing that as soon as possible. Okay, good. Well, I would just encourage us to to look at that as soon as we as soon as we can be. And again, that it's a no cost thing, and I think uh, probably is behooves Arvada to be out in front of uh, what what I see as a coming thing. So, thank you. I appreciate that. Especially with certain bike riders aging demographics who would prefer to have a little extra help when they need it. I was speaking about myself. I was. <laughs> Ms. Ford. Well, I was going to make a motion. You may make the motion. I move that CP2017-0001, a resolution by the Planning Commission for the City of Arvada, Colorado, to amend the City of Arvada Comprehensive Plan 2014 to incorporate the 2017 Arvada Bicycle Master Plan and make additional revisions related thereto be approved. This motion is based on the findings of fact adopted by Planning Commission. Ms. Ford, if you would add the word ratified and approved, that's the technical requirement. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank be you ratified and approved. Okay. Do you want me to read the whole thing? Or no, that's... That's okay. Okay, motion has been made. All votes are cast. That passes the seven to zero. One of the, you know, Arvada has so many um, jewels in its crown, and one of them certainly is our bike-friendly attitude and, and the trail system. And, and uh, I think uh, I'll echo what Mr. Marriott and others have said in terms of great staff work and, and uh, consultants did a good job, but uh, certainly our, our volunteers who were advisors on this um, we really looked at their input and considered it, and I think we've got a great document because of it. Okay, next I'll open the public hearing on Council Bill 17029, an ordinance repealing, retitling, and reenacting Section 62-40, trespass of Article 2, miscellaneous offenses of Chapter 62 offenses of the Arvada City Code and establishing penalties for violation thereof. Mr. Devin. Mr. Actually, Mayor, uh, Mr. if Polk. it pleases the council, I'd like to go ahead and at least start off the uh, review of the matter. What you have in front of your, uh, yourself tonight for your uh, consideration is a amendment to the Arvada City Code. This is in Chapter 62 of the City Code. Uh, as the cover sheet suggests, it's been some time since we've taken a look at this, and in particular, we're looking at the issue of uh, trespass and unlawful remaining. Uh, as, as we say here, it's been some time since we've looked at this and the timing is good. We are in the process of taking a look at a comprehensive review of entire uh, chapter, uh, but we are starting with this one. Uh, Nora Stinson, the uh, senior assistant city attorney in our office, led the team on the, re on the uh, development of this particular ordinance. Uh, and at this point in time, I'd like to turn it over to Nora to give you some background and briefing on this particular matter. Very good. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Williams and members of City Council. As uh, Mr. Polk suggested, I'm here to present the revisions to the existing trespass ordinance. That, as Mr. Polk said, the current ordinance doesn't 
um, or I should say is in need of updating. It doesn't conform very well to our existing state laws on criminal trespass. And uh, in looking at the ordinance, uh, we wanted to ensure that it more closely conforms with our state criminal trespass laws. And we also wanted to update the ordinance to give property ordinances, property owners a bit more guidance on uh, proper signage to ensure notice uh, that uh, trespassers are not welcome onto a particular property. And we also, also thought that this update would ensure that anyone who goes on to another person's property uh, would understand or be given a bit more guidance uh, on what constitutes effective notice with regard to no trespassing signage. Okay, is there any member of the public that would like to testify regarding this proposed ordinance change? Seeing none, I'll uh, close public comment portion and open it up for city council questions or action. Mr. Jones? <clears throat> I don't know if there are any questions. Ms. Ford's going to have a question, okay. I believe. Do you have any questions? I don't have any okay. questions. Ms. Ford? I have a question. Um, when I first read this, and because I didn't read the other ordinances around this, um, when I read number one under C, enclosed or fenced premises, um, I guess my question was, you know, if you have someone on your property that just goes on to your property, whether it's enclosed or not. Is this the ordinance that would take care of that? So in other words, if someone was on your property and you asked them to leave, that you didn't want them on your property, regardless of whether you had a no trespassing sign or not on your property, um, and whether or not it was in an enclosed area, it, this would still take care of that, correct? Uh, yes, Mrs. Ford, this <clears throat> would take care of those situations. And in particular, if you look at uh, section 6240 subparagraph D, um, the situation that you described where, for example, there might not be a fenced premises or enclosed premises, mm -hmm. but a property owner indicates to someone suspected of trespassing that they're not welcome on the property, then that is usually categorized as unlawful remaining. And so a person's permission or license or authority to be on the property could be revoked in a variety of ways. It could be revoked through signage or in the situation you're talking about. Mm -hmm. It could be revoked verbally by, by the property owner or someone who's in charge of managing the property. Okay. And then I just had a, a correction to make on, on the document. Uh, under E, number one, posting of a no trespassing sign, those two words were cross hmm did you see that and then number two I, I would just put a no trespassing sign constitutes that's what i would put miss ford and i had a recent discussion i think her prior history as an english teacher is benefiting city council <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, I'm not only am I a, a former teacher, but a writer as well, yeah, so it, all it's, it's hard good. to leave these things. I hear you. <laughs> my, my mom was an English teacher as well, so I get it. Okay, Mr. Jones, you may make a motion. <clears throat> Thank you. I move the Council Bill 17-029, an ordinance repealing, retitling, and reenacting Section 62-40, Trespass of Article 2, miscellaneous offenses of chapter 62, offenses of the Arvada City Code and establishing penalties for violations thereof be approved on final reading numbered 4607 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval, all votes are cast. That passes seven to zero, thank you. Next, I will open the public hearing on Council Bill 17030, an ordinance approving the Fourth Amendment to the City of Arvada Retirement Plan regarding vesting of Arvada Police Dispatch Program employees. Mr. Devin. 
Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, this uh, action before you tonight would address the separation of the Arvada Police uh, uh, Dispatch Program employees from the city and, and therefore the retirement plan. Um, it uh, uh, allows them to basically to vest uh, and uh, we did a similar kind of action with the Arvada Center employees uh, back uh, a little over a year ago. Um, this came before the Board of Trustees of the Retirement Board. The board recommended the City Council approve the amendment uh, to the plan document, which will allow those police dispatch employees who are not fully vested at the time of separation to become fully vested after a six month period uh, from separation of their continuous uh, and their continuous six month employment with uh, the new Jeffcom uh, Dispatch Center, uh, Jeffcom Authority. Uh, staff recommends approval of the ordinance. Okay, is there any member of the public that would like to address City Council on this issue? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion and open it up for City Council questions or action. Mr. Pfeiffer? If there's not any questions, I'll go ahead and make the motion. You may proceed. I move that Council Bill 17-030, an ordinance approving the Fourth Amendment uh, to the City of Arvada Retirement Plan regarding the vesting of Arvada Police Dispatcher Program employees be approved on final reading number 4608 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval. All votes cast. That passes seven to zero. Thank you. Can we take a break? We can take a stand in place. Yep. Good. Okay, I'm going to open the public hearing on Council Bill 17031, an ordinance amending various sections of, sec of Chapter 102 utilities of the Arvada City Code pertaining to water user rates. Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council. The next few items as it relates to the budget were actually presented in a lot of detail on September the 18th during our uh, business meeting as part of uh, kind of the study session, uh, part of the business meeting. Uh, and now they're up tonight for the City Council's uh, adoption after, or consideration uh, for adoption after the public hearing. Uh, this particular ordinance uh, increases the water user re uh, fees by two and a half percent. What I would like to remind the council, back on the September the 18th, we talked about the fact that the increased cost uh, would have projected a 3.5 percent increase. However, because we have debt service retiring in 2020, uh, we, uh, and, and some of that debt service was actually uh, 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 funded by the operational uh, program for the water utility uh, and, and will decrease by about $450,000 annually. And because we practice long range planning, uh, we are smoothing out the rate increase to 2.5% uh, in 2018, uh, as, and that would smooth out future rate changes. Uh, also, I might add that our, I felt our uh, utility staff did an exceptional job this year because this is the only rate increase for all of our other utilities that we're uh, recommending, uh, just the 2.5% for the water utility, we're not recommending any um, rate increases for sewer, storm water, et cetera, um, as part of this budget proposal. So we uh, would recommend approval of the ordinance. Okay, is there any member of the public that would like to address city council on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion, open it up for city council question or action. Ms. Ford. 
I'd like to uh, make a motion if there you, are no questions. You may proceed. I move that CB 17-031, an ordinance amending various sections of Chapter 102, Utilities of the Arvada City Code pertaining to water users' rates, be approved on final reading numbered 4609 and ordered published by title only. Motions for approval. All votes are cast. That passes seven to zero. Thank you. Yeah, it was kind of unusual not to see uh, a request for a sewer uh, rate increase or a uh, stormwater increase. So I applaud staff for holding it down and for the decision to uh, utilize our, our savings so that we didn't have to do as large of an increase with regard to the water rates. Okay, next, I'll open the public hearing on Council Bill 17032, an ordinance appropriating funds for fiscal year 2018. At the same time, we'll consider R17115, a resolution adopting the budget for fiscal year 2018. R17116, a resolution adopting the 2018 Capital Improvement Fund budget and allocating for special specific projects for in 2018. Also, R17117, a resolution adopting the pay plan for fiscal year 2018. And R17118, a resolution approving in content the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority or a budget for fiscal year 2018. Mr. Devin? Yes, again, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, we uh, presented uh, information to you extensively on September the 18th. Also back in August, we had a workshop where we presented our updated 10-year financial plans uh, for uh, all of our major funds, uh, our, um, uh, uh, the budget uh, and the 10-year financial plans are fully balanced uh, for the remainder of the 10-year planning period. Uh, before you tonight uh, is the ordinance appropriating um, uh, funds of, of over $210,561 uh, for fiscal year 2018. Uh, we will certainly go back uh, as we uh, update the, uh, the financial plans for the next two-year budget uh, beginning this next coming year um, and, and uh, provide that to you, but for the second year budget of 2018, uh, we're fully balanced and, and fully funded as we presented on September the 18th, and we're recommending approval of the ordinances and the resolutions. Okay, is there any member of the public that would like to address City Council at this time on this ad item? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion, open it up for City Council questions or action. Mr. Marriott? I don't have any questions, but I'd like to make a motion if nobody else has questions. Mr. Jones? I just want to make a correction. You said 210,000. It's 210 million. Thank you. 210 million. Thank you, Council Member Jones. <laughs> if we only allocated a couple hundred thousand, you see, I think we'd have a. We'd have a. I think we'd have a motion to amend pretty darn quick. Okay. Very good. Okay. I move that Council Bill 17-032 an ordinance appropriating funds for fiscal year 2018 be approved on final reading, numbered 4610 and ordered published by title only. And, and I wanna just make one quick question, or a quick comment, and that is uh, for, for, for folks who follow this budget, one of the things you'll notice in this budget is a continued direction of funds to street maintenance. Uh, and I wanna commend the city manager and the, and the staff for making difficult decisions to do that but also doing what is obviously one of our highest priorities. So thank you for doing that. Mr. Pfeiffer, Mr. Jones, if you can get your votes in. Thank you very much. All votes are cast. That passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, you next I move that R17-115, a resolution adopting the budget for fiscal year 2018 be approved. Motions for approval of the budget. All votes cast. That passes six to one. Mr. Howard traditionally voting no on this matter for reasons. Do you want to state or it's not a line item budget in your opinion? I, I don't want to repeat the previous arguments I've had and I, city manager is well aware of my concerns. Mr. Howard, your vote is noted of record um, on this. The last time you're going to get to vote no on, on the budget. <laughs> I just like to be cons consistent and you're, Mr. Protect, Howard, you're nothing if not consistent. Thank you. <laughs> Next, I move that R17-116, 
a resolution adopting the 2018 capital improvement fund budget and allocating for specific projects in 2018 be approved. Capital improvement fund budget, all votes cast, passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Next, I move that R17-117, a resolution adopting the pay plan for fiscal year 2018 be approved. Motions to adopt the pay plan. All votes cast. Passes seven to zero. Okay, and lastly, I move that R17-118, a resolution <laughs> approving in content the Arvada Urban Renewal Authority budget for fiscal year 2018 be approved. All votes cast. That passes seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, next I'll open the public hearing on Council Bill 17033, an ordinance certifying the City of Arvada Mill Levy for 2017 for the Board of County Commissioners for Jefferson and Adams Counties. Mr. Devin. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, this uh, ordinance is to certify the City's Mill Levy for the evaluation year 2017. Uh, the proposed budget estimates that uh, nearly, uh, well, over $5.9 million uh, uh, dollars will be collected uh, based on the mill levy rate of 4.31 mills. There's no change in the mill levy rate from the previous year, and we're recommending approval of this ordinance. Is there any member of the public that would like to testify on this item? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing, open it up for council questions or action. Mr. Marriott. Yes, I move that Council Bill 17-033, an ordinance certifying the City of Arvada Mill Levy for 2017 for the Board of County Commissioners for Jefferson and Adams Counties be approved on final reading, numbered 4611 and ordered published by title only. This certifies to the counties our mill levy, which we're not increasing, all votes are cast. That passes 7-0. to zero. Thank you. Finally, uh, I'll open the public hearing on Council Bill 17034, an ordinance amending Article 3, Sales and Use Tax of Chapter 98, Taxation of the City Code of the City of Arvada, Colorado, by amending Section 98-68, Reports by Vendor, Payment of Tax. Mr. Devon. Yes, Mr. Mayor, or Mr. Mayor, members of the Council, uh, we're going to have our Revenue Manager, Ezekiel Vasquez, present, uh, give you a short presentation on this, and then, of course, we'll be happy to um, answer any questions uh, that you may have. Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Tonight I'm going to talk about uh, a couple of proposed changes that we're bringing forward to uh, change the sales and use tax ordinance. Just need to get back on track here. Okay. As you may know, sales and use taxes are the primary source of revenue for the city's general fund. Last year, in 2016, we collected approximately $74 million in sales and use taxes. These taxes come from the 6,700 licensed businesses that, are businesses that are licensed to operate in the city of Arvada. In an average year, these businesses submit to us 26,000 tax returns. And these tax returns, when they come in, the way that we process them is something that we've been doing for quite a while now. The, the process has not fundamentally changed since we began collecting taxes in Arvada. Uh, on a monthly basis, we print and mail tax return forms to businesses, and we also send them a, a return envelope. When the businesses receive these forms, they, they fill out the form with their sales and, and deductions, and they, they write a check and send it back to us. When, when we get these forms back, then we open up the mail and make sure that everything is, uh, is calculated correctly. And then we enter the data manually into our tax system of record. This is a process that takes us approximately 2,050 hours per year to complete. And it costs us around $104,968 to complete this. changes that we're proposing to make to the ordinance would require businesses to file and pay their taxes online. This would benefit the businesses as well as our organization. Businesses could file and pay their taxes online at any time that is convenient to them. They could do it on the weekend, they could do it from their home, and they would have all the information they need 
on this online tax portal. They could see what their balance due is. They could see previous tax filings, and uh, they could also submit payments free of charge through this tax portal. If we choose, if you choose to adopt these changes to the ordinance, we will realize a savings of $104,968 in the fact that we will no longer have to print and mail tax returns and we won't have to manually enter them into the tax system of record. Do you have any questions I can answer? Well, I'm gonna open it up for public comment first. Is there any member of the public like to address city council on this matter? Seeing none, I'll close the public comment portion and open it up for council questions. Uh, Mr. McGough, you're first. Thank you. Yes, my question is that uh, if about 40% of the uh, city businesses have chosen to remit returns in this electronic format in this trial period, that would be something less than 3,000 of the 6,700 businesses is there any thought that any of these businesses, the very small businesses, might have any problem with this uh, going electronic? And if they should have any problem, how do we address that? Yes, sir, we have put some thought into that and we are uh, offering businesses that might not be too familiar or too comfortable using online forms. We, we have a, a kiosk that we're gonna place in our uh, finance department lobby area and folks can come and we can walk them through that process so that they could actually uh, learn how to do it hands-on and, and we can uh, guide them as they file and pay those taxes there. But somebody with a very small business should be able to handle this uh, eventually, even if it takes some instruction, they should be able to handle it with their personal computer from, from home, for example, or from their business. Yes, sir, and, and we'd be happy but to... But you'll be providing assistance to those who may encounter some problems. Correct. Okay, thank you. Mr. Howard? I had the same question, but I wanted to commend the manager and the staff for saving money. Mr. Jones? I was going to just make a motion. Okay, Mr. Marriott? Okay. <clears throat> I just had uh, kind of a question along the same vein, having had a business for a really long time, we tend to get really set in our ways and it's sometimes really tough for us to change. Um, and my question was gonna be, are you providing like an opt out or anything for any of those businesses who really just either can't or just aren't comfortable with doing something like this online? And I think you've answered it by saying you're gonna have a, a kiosk available to them here in City Hall. So while it may not be as easy as mailing it like they're used to at least, they can come in and get assistance with that. Is that what you're saying? Uh, yes, sir. And, and we'll be able to help them uh, over the phone as well if they have any okay. issues uh, filling out the, the form okay. from and, their business. And, and do you have kind of a plan of a transition for the businesses who have still elected to do it the old fashioned way with the paper returns of, of not just all of a sudden one day their world is different, but, but some way of kind of phasing them into it or, or easing them into this transition of needing to do things electronically? Uh, yes, we have for the, the majority of this past year, 2017, we've been sending out uh, different notifications. Uh, we've been sending mailings and printing messages on return forms. We've been using uh, messages on our website and social media just to alert folks and give them a heads up that uh, they, they might want to learn how to use the online form and, and reach out to us so we can guide them through that. Okay. Well, I, I would encourage you as you as this gets implemented to I always worry about, you know, government sometimes has a heavy hand, you know, can make people do stuff they otherwise wouldn't do. I would encourage you to uh, uh, be kind to those businesses who may struggle with this and to to do anything you can to make it easier on them and and uh, be sympathetic to, to them when they express their difficulties maybe with uh, with making this transition. But thank you for the effort you're putting into this. And I agree with Mr. Allard. Thank you for trying to save the city money. And, and you know, changing sometimes is difficult, but, but probably for the best. So thanks for doing that. Thank you. Mr. Jones, you may make your motion. <clears throat> thank you. I move that Council Bill 17-034, an ordinance amending Article 3, sales and use tax of chapter 98 taxation of the city 
Code of the City of Arvada, Colorado, by amending Section 98-68, Reports by Vendors, Payment of Tax, be approved on final reading numbered 4612 and ordered published by title only. And I just want to make a, a quick comment and speak to this. Um, I, I, I too appreciate uh, all of the comments that have been made specific to small business owners, but as a small business owner, um, my controller came to me and thanked me, and I had nothing to do with this, um, for her ability to be able to, to do this online. So it was a great step for, for her and for the processes that she does. And so I, my hope is that uh, other businesses like ours um, will be able to benefit from this. So I will be supporting this motion. Mr. Jones, to be a good politician, you have to take credit for what your staff does. So, yeah. so. I couldn't. <laughs> I didn't even know it happened. <laughs> well, that, that, that doesn't stop a lot of people. <laughs> Mr. Jones, if I could get your vote. Thank you. All votes are cast. That passes 7 to 0. Thank you. That concludes our public hearings. Is there any member of the public that would like to address City Council during the second? public comment portion. Seeing none, I'll close that. We've had council reports. Are there any additional council reports? Seeing none, Mr. Devin, anything else you've got? Mr. Polk, thank you for filling in so admirably for uh, Chris Daly tonight. Would you like to make a report? Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor and members of City Council. Of course, the City Council has seen our briefing memo on the outcome of the Denver Health case. Uh, this is one of these matters that uh, we'll take a significant victory in front of the Colorado Supreme Court any day of the week, and we'd like to uh, uh, acknowledge and thank the City Council for their guidance and uh, direction in making these decisions and prosecuting the case. Of course, it is not over yet, as many cases are not. I'd like to take a moment just to, uh, again, acknowledge the leadership of Chris Daly and the litigation team, who consisted of Roberto, now uh, still Roberto, but now Judge <laughs> Ramirez, uh, of Adams County, formerly Senior Assistant City Attorney uh, Dave DeMuro, his outside uh, law firm that assisted us, Rachel Morris, our office, uh, current litigator uh, Tony Riepschlager, the very excellent paralegal that we had, as well as the assistance, uh, guidance, and uh, support from our colleagues in the City Manager's Office, the Finance Department, Risk Management in particular, uh, and of course the Police Department for doing their very excellent work from the get-go. Thank you. Thank you for that. Okay, we stand adjourned.